Welcome back to Beyond the Diamond Astros infield preview. Spring training is winding down. Opening day oh. is right around the corner. Um, apparently, there was baseball last night. <laughs> yeah, because the Dodgers and Padres played in Korea, and that the, this, morning. Game. this morning. This morning, yeah, as of three twenty. Um, but yeah, the infield. Uh, we had a good discourse on the bullpen as that shakes out. Good discourse on the starting rotation as injuries flare up. Uh, and all eyes shift to the offense and, and the defense as well. So, um, and so uh, Brian is missing. He is at a, uh, a wedding. He always, he, he's at a wedding. He, he does a lot of friends. Can, he has a lot of friends. <laughs> a lot of, I thought I'd be his plus one to go to freaking Cabo, but I guess not or wherever he's at. <laughs> I mean, geez, Louise, think you think, you know, a guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Brian is Brian is on the uh, five day IL. He'll be back next week as we do our season preview predictions and Yankee predictions. But right now we're going to jump into the infield and let's just start at the hot corner third base. Um, right. Who's starting last, third base for the, the Astros? last year? The last year of Alex Bregman as his contract is up. And he's a free agent to be uh, in front of the program. Uh, I'm thinking he ends up with a top two year at third base. What like, I've seen. Top two in the AL or MLB? I think MLB. Wow. That's a stacked position. It is stacked. But man, this. The way he's been approaching and hitting the ball, it's just this contract year Bregman's different. And uh, he's hitting the shit out of the baseball. A lot of line drives, a lot of balls in the gaps, and that just translates the power uh, across to, to all dimensions. So uh, that's kind of where I am. I mean, he's the dude. Obviously, he's he's been just a constant rock, right? He's, he changed his diet up. He's been durable. He's been able to be in that lineup every single day. Uh, he's just he's just an absolute dude, and I I don't know where the future lies. I would love to have him back. Obviously, he's a he's a cornerstone of this city and this team. Um, but you cannot replace an Alex Bregman like just like you cannot replace a Gary Bertier. Like you just cannot. And I don't think people realize how instrumental he is to what is going on here and to just a baseball level when you have a constant person you can slot in to the lineup card every day and not worry about it like yeah that's huge i mean that he's hit huge he's hit you know in the top five of our lineup for seven straight years <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's when he's gonna when he if if and when he's gone like i don't think people realize how much shorter that our lineup becomes 100 percent. even if you get I mean, there's almost there's almost no replacing that. I mean, there as far as third base, like you said, he could be top two this year. I mean, he's definitely top five third baseman in baseball. You're gonna lose value at that position almost no matter what. So yeah. extend Bregman. That's what I'm saying. Extend him. Uh, the other side, the depth behind it. Yeah. Um, Hensley was just optioned down. Uh, you have Kessinger, but he has a hamstring. Uh, in the in the just the lower levels, you have the Will Wagners, the Denzo, the Whitcombs. Um, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of off days for Alex Bregman. So yeah, that, you, that, that's an issue. There's not, a, I don't know where you go there on, on depth wise. I mean, you have Dubon and we'll get into to what Doobie's able to do, which is a, a godsend for, especially a first year manager. But um, yeah, uh, when but you even, slot in Alex Bregman for 155 games, 156 games, whatever it is, like you're asking a lot. Yeah, it might be one of the um, least deep positions we have, um, especially if Kessinger is injured. And Hin like Kessinger and H Hensley were the two guys. Um, and if if he's injured and Hensley's not performing, all of a sudden, Will Wagner, Dezenzo, like your prospect is like you got to come up. Like if Bregman went down, we need a prospect to come up and perform immediately. We don't have because Dubon. I think has played some third base, but it's definitely, I think his weakest position as far as his utility um, is concerned. Um, but the Zinzo played 72 games at third base in the minor leagues last year. So I think he's probably, if I had to guess our number two 
at third base would be Dezenzo. Mm. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think the other side too, and, I, and I'm looking at his, his baseball ref, reference page uh, while you were talking, you can't, re- you can't replicate and you can't replace a 35 and a half war player. Yeah. You just can't. He's, uh, he's one. Of, he's literally one of the best Astros of all time. He's on track to be a Hall of Fame third baseman. If he 100%. if he plays until he's like thirty eight, and you know, obviously there'll be a curve there. But if he maintains some sort of pace, um, I mean, yeah, he's he's on track to be a Hall of Fame third baseman. And people, and people some people are just like, are like, oh yeah, it's fine. We'll we'll find somebody else. I'm like, ooh man. You, you can't. And look, I, the, the argument is always, oh, the 2019 Alex Brego is not walking through the door. Neither are the juice balls. Like you can't, yeah, you can't keep yeah. relying on that. I'll, I'll take 26 bombs, 100 RBIs I mean, every season. Last, the last two years, and this is why I pulled it up, he, he got banged in, in 21, right? He, he had the injuries. He played through it. 22, 23, he makes that change. And the durability just goes skyrocketing. 155 yeah. games in, in 22, 161 games in 23. You only missed uh, one game last missed one year. Missed one game. Missed one game last year. That's crazy. And I believe as I'm pl- 23 home runs in 22 and 25 home runs in, in 23, flirting at, at 93 RBIs and 98 RBIs, so me right in the middle, 95 and a half RBIs. You take that every single time. Um, it's great. He has... In his career, in his career, one, two, COVID year doesn't count, three, four. For the seven years, he has more walks than strikeouts. <laughs> it's crazy. He, I feel like he, he's been around for so long. He's a World Series champion. He, was, he got MVP votes, but he's still probably one of the most underrated players on the Astros. Yeah, I mean, he rolls out of bed, has an 800 OPS, and plays 161 games. Yeah. All right, let, what position do yes. you want to go to next? Uh, let's just shuffle it over to, to shortstop. I'm okay. bullish on the young kid. Um, really? I, I think everything changed when you're named World Series MVP. Everything changes. You're on fucking Jay Leno. You're on <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. You're at Disney World. You're doing Raising Cane's drive-ins. You're doing all this different stuff. You have no time for hanging out with the family or friends. He also played in the WBC. By the way, yeah, WBC player, so he has to show up early. It's a lot. It's a whirlwind, and... Baseball is a fickle mistress, and she is mean and ugly. And the report was out. Sliders away, sliders away, sliders away, sliders away, sliders away, sliders away. I like the new mechanics. I did. I, did like I wasn't it. a huge fan. I wasn't a huge fan on the first cage videos. Yeah. In game, I like it. everything slowed down. But the biggest thing, and and you can ask anyone, right hand to left hand, it doesn't matter what level you p- played on. But we, you're spraying the ball to the opposite gap. Everything is clicking. Yeah. And I've seen three or four at-bats that have been strung together by, by JP that are that way. That gives me a lot of confidence. Um, so you, you're, you're expecting a tick up. I about huge bounce, huge bounce back. Huge bounce back. Okay. That's. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to carry the team and be a top four guy in this stacked offense. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't need have to. to be. He doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be. He needs to be a solid seventh or eighth hitter, like two eighty average. Oh yeah, maybe twenty bond. Like that would be oh everything. Yeah. That's all we need. That's oh, all we yeah. need. Um. Oh, one last thing on the on the Bregman thing that I forgot about. Uh, birthday. His birthday's the thirtieth, which is the second game of the year or third game of the year, I believe. So he, he's hitting a bomb. He's hitting a bomb. So he's hitting a bomb. Prize picks. We're back with prize picks. Um. Use make code sure Apollo. you take more <laughs> code Apollo. Um at the first deposit and they'll match up to a hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, take his more than on he, he, uh, his birthday. Going his season back. line is 23 and a half bombs. I'm taking the over on that. The, the more, more than, than I'm taking more than, than for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. 100%. We have something, we have something cooking up. Yeah. We're, we're cooking. We have a something, something cooking up for our <laughs> prize picks. Uh, but back to Jeremy. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm I buying. I'm buying all that low stock. And look, there's expectations when you are a World Series MVP, 100. percent There's expectations when the guy you replace never had a year, um, like what was experienced last year. It's true. Saying all that, I just it's just another year of the league where you just get better. You either get better or you or you're out of the, you're washed out of the league. And at, with Jeremy, I think. He's a guy that will rise to the occasion. He has a pedigree. His dad was in the show. Um, a full off season, a full, a full everything. I'm buying a stock. Last season, he uh, or his career OPS is seven ten. I will take like a seven forty. Like it, I, it doesn't need to be crazy, but in, just a seven forty or above, solid. You know. With his defense, like a three war, that's that's all I want from Jeremy Pena. And behind think, him, go ahead. We, go, I would say behind him, that's where Dubon. I think Dubon's. I think best positions from the eye test for me is second and shortstop. I think that's where he excels. So that's where I I even have less worry because I'm like between the two of them, somebody should be able to perform, and I do think Jeremy. I don't know if he has a short leash, but I think if he's struggling by like May, Doobie might be picking up some of those starts. Wow. Interesting. This I is, don't, I this don't think is, it'll go that way, but this is where I'm at with, with Jeremy. I think he is who he is and he had a really, really great month in October and all the accolades that came with it. But other than the home runs, obviously 10 home runs last year, he had 22 his rookie year. He had 32 doubles last season. Yeah. Compared to 20 the year before. He had 152 hits, more than 132 from the year before. Um, the runs were up. The stolen bases were up. Uh, the walks were up. Strikeouts are, are very high. Uh, we'll have to cut that down. And the OPS was was down by 10 points. But I think that's kind of who he was. I just think yeah, it, it was we, a, we, what we saw in a month, Yeah, we thought that would be throughout the season and nobody's going to do that and no one's going to do that randy uh, Ros- randy rosarina didn't hit 50 bombs right. after you know the 2020 playoffs like where he went off like that's just sometimes guys get lucky sometimes they get unlucky jeremy was that whole second half of last season everybody was you know joking on twitter about how he can't hit a home run whatever and he's hit the weight room whatever during all that he was still hitting like 280 290 yeah. So he wasn't he wasn't slumping per se. He just wasn't hitting it out of the park. But he was still hitting doubles. He was still getting hits. And he was still playing great defense. So it's, it wasn't like he was a bad player the second half of the season. He just a little bit of luck, a little bit of mechanics. He just wasn't lifting the ball how you would want to. So yeah. I yeah. do think with this new change in his mechanics, I see an uptick. And, and we'll get to it because there's a there's a new catcher. But when you're in the bottom half of the lineup and there's outs down there, you start pressing to not be an out. And so yeah. I think this year with more elongated lineup, that that's a great point. Um, he'll the comfort should be there a little bit more. He you um, know I, he's one that I would love Jeremy to be hit hitting ninth, a double leadoff. Yeah, I mean, what's more protection than Jose Altuve right behind oh, you? Oh, true. Like, <laughs> like you're you're okay, Jose Altuve. You know, Alex Bregman, Jordan, like they're all right behind you. Like you're you're gonna get pitched to. Uh the last thing with Jeremy in the shortstop position, uh obviously Kessinger's on on the on the bench right now with a hammy. Um hey, he made a people forget he made a he made a play a in the ALCS, play. a huge play. I mean he's got he's got the gloves. If, if the Astros if the Astros yeah. went on the win one of those yeah. last two, that play would have been like, oh, that's what helped propel us to the World Series. Isn't it crazy? Plays like that would be on the World Series DVD, but when you lose, people are, you're like, people forget. We're talking about yeah. six months. People forget. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted to mention just Kessinger in, in that. Uh, also, I kind of, uh, uh, mentioned Shea Whitcomb here. Um, yeah. He played 97 games for, for the Space Cowboys last year. 25 years old. I think he's really solid. Um, he has a career 777 minor league OPS. I don't think he's like knocking on the door to take Jeremy's place, but with an injury, I, you know, I mean, don't be surprised if you see him get some starts in the majors in June Ooh. and, you know, see what happens. You never know. Yeah. Um, 
I think, I mean, and last thing with Jeremy, small sample size in, in spring training. He's only had 30 at bats. Obviously, the OPS is down at 595. Um, has a hit a tank, so still searching for that bomb. But I think process over results with the yeah. with the new swing change. And I really was liking some of that, that double and the triple and some of those at bats that were hitting the other way. Um, I like to see him work there a little bit more. Um, shifting over, I mean, you just have the greatest second baseman in <laughs> baseball history. Yeah. Um, in Mauricio Dubon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first half of last season, he first was MVP. I mean, I love Doobie. I think the super utility role, um, and we'll jump into 27 talk, but to, to talk about Doobie at every position because he plays every position. He was yeah. a godsend last year. I, I believe a lot of people thought David Hensley was going to be that super utility guy after letting Diaz walk the year before. Um, and Mauricio Dubon just steps up in, in, in a, he, he a tough spot. Stood his ground. Stood I mean, his ground. I mean. Have, has anybody ever – I mean, yes, but – when it comes to a position battle in spring training and in a season, I mean, he put that conversation away. Oh, yeah. I mean, Hensley struggled and Dubon was just taking off. So, and now he's c- cemented himself as like he is for sure, he's our sixth man. You know, he's our number one guy off the bench. He's going to get at bats and, and he's having a hell of a spring. Oh, my God. 1257 <laughs> OPS, a 742 slugging, 484 batting average. One tank, five doubles, 15 hits, and 31 at-bats. Uh, yeah, that plays. That plays yeah. in the show. Uh, his, his swing looks nice. He, he looks like he's picking up. You know, he's one of those guys that strikes me as a, being a sponge. Mm. He really, like, he, he hangs around Jordan. He hangs around those guys. And I yeah. feel like he's really picking up subtle things with the swing. You notice, like, a year and a half ago, that power was not there. And all of a sudden, right. toward, throughout the season – towards the end of the season and then now in spring training, like he is just hitting the ball with thump all of a sudden. So do I'm really you, excited to see what he does. Do you think last year he had 492 at bats, but a lot of that was with Altuve out. Yeah. Do you think he can get to 400 at bats plate appearances? I think it all depends on Jeremy Pena. Okay. I think if, if Jeremy's struggling with like a, 220 average and like a 600 OPS. If if by May, by June he's struggling, Mauricio is picking up. Hmm. Like he's starting every other day or something. Um, especially if Mauricio is doing doing well. Yeah, I, I think he probably ends around 300. Okay, ABs th- stretched I, around multiple. Yeah, positions. I think yeah, 320, 330 range. Um, yeah, but he, I mean, he gives you that that leverage to give a guy a day off. He, he allows you to do a lot of stuff. I mean, hell, he could start any corner. He could start pretty much everywhere but first base. Yeah. Well, and he can also <laughs> come in. Well, he can start. He started. To call, he started. I think I have on here. He started one game. Yeah, two I games, think that's when two games at first base last year. When when Abreu was going through it a bit. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I think he. he I, I don't know if he starts a whole lot of games. I think he gets a lot of his innings coming into games halfway mm-hmm. through. If it's a replacement. Yeah. And then to talk about the cornerstone, the greatest Houston Astro of all time, uh, just ex- got extended for an Astro for life contract, team friendly, Jose Altuve. I, I mean, I'm expecting is it, is big it, things. Yeah. Is it crazy? I mean, we've seen everything. We've seen the moments. We've seen the the all the home runs. We've seen all the plays. We've seen all the big hits. And yet we're still like, there's more. There's mm-hmm. more there. And you only get that in super rare athletes. Yeah. And a lot of the times it's the Brady's, it's the Kobe's. But you have this guy that's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, from Venezuela, who has that same gene that is just yeah. great. It's that gene that like extends your prime like well into your 30s. When most people's primes are like 27 to 31. Yeah. Those great those great athletes somehow they just they're playing the same at 35 that they were at 30. It's like I, I think he's like that. I, I am a, I'm a hundred percent there because every we've seen everything, and yet collectively as a fan base, collectively as a city, we're just like there's more there. And that's yeah. that's asking so much. That's asking way too much. But I think he just has that gene of greatness, and we see it. 
every October. He's the he's the freaking Grim Reaper for every organization uh, and punching bag for every other organization. He's loved, beloved here. The the statue of him will be taller than any building downtown. And, <laughs> it should be. And yet, going into the season, I'm like, is there another MVP in there? That's... Is you know, there another MVP? In there? I didn't really thought about it. Shohei's out of there. Like, I mean, there's a lot of great players in the AL, but shit, man. I mean, he could. I I just I never put a ceiling on ex- any expectations with Altuve. Like, I just you know he could show up and hit 40 bombs this year. Like, <laughs> especially with Minute Maid, like he starts pulling them all, like, all of a sudden. You're like, oh, Altuve's at 36 bombs, 120 RBIs, 900 OPS. You're like, holy shit. And like when you, I, just, I don't, I'm out of words. I'm, I'm just <laughs> out of word because anything that is is gonna be out there in, in a sense, like he's just gonna surpass it. And yeah. like the projections on on Baseball Reference, I believe, it has him like at 868 OPS, batting 290 with 20 bombs. I'm gonna take the over on 20 bombs. Uh, I just I think he's in a flirt and with missing so many games last year he had a 915 OPS 311 batting average he had 17 home runs and 410 plate appearances that's yeah like massively 200 less than what he's had in the all all the other years yeah I mean that's 200 more at bats for Jose Altuve last year that's just on his normal pace where he just like all of a sudden is just a 30 home run guy every season do you know what his career 162 average is? What? It's an 834 OPS, 307 batting average with 20 tanks. Like, that's his career <laughs> line. Like, it's and it's insane. not, he's not like he's only been around for two years. Like, that's, yeah, that's more than 10 years in the bigs. And that's yeah. his average. 209 career home runs, 400 doubles. Like, <laughs> I think. This is oh, why I'm going to give a wild. Okay. This isn't really that we're, we, you know, we need to get in the other position and everything, but this isn't really a place for it. But hot take Altuve ends his career with 400 home runs. Wow. I think he has 200 more in him. It'll be close. I think he has at It'll least, I think he has at least five more seasons <sighs> of 30 home run average. That's, that's asking a lot. And then, you know, depending on how long he plays, <laughs> what he, uh, it's probably way off. But I, I, just, yeah, I, just don't, like, I just don't have – I mean, 350, I think, is a more realistic, um, like, high goal. Um, I'm, I'm trying to pull up, uh, see if there's MVP odds right now because I, I just want to know what Jose LTV is. Well, while you're looking it up, uh, let me talk a little bit about Mr. Joey Luperfito. Oh, because I think he is. Oh, I have a man crush. <laughs> I think if uh, we're finally onto a position that he's at, he is an outfielder, but he plays first and second as well. Last year, he played 19 games at first and 21 at second. So he is another option. God forbid things go things go ways. You know, if you need a guy to pick up some starts at second, he is right there. You also have Shane Whitcomb and Dezenzo and Will Wagner all have played games at third base so that we have some depth there as opposed to uh third base and shorts up um plus four thousand put a little put a little 10 bucks on there you know it draft king sports book plus four thousand um you never know put a hundred dollars you win four thousand on jose he's jose (laughs) altuve's with royce lewis and marcus simeon tied for those odds Interesting. I'm surprised the Royce is that high, to be honest. You want a hot take? Two th- plus 2,000 Mike Trout. People. That's kind of crazy that he's that I, low. This is, I think this is, I think we'll this is a big another, year. We'll say this in another podcast, but I have an extremely hot take that I think everyone is underrating. It's crazy. Trout. He had a couple of injuries, and people just forget that he was yeah. one of the best players of all time, and he's still young. Yeah, and I've, yeah, I have... I think everyone underestimates Jose Altuve. I think he's extremely underrated. Yeah. Um, so that's where I am. And but the Joey Luperfito, I, I we could talk about. Let's let's just let's talk at first base. Let's move over to first base uh, and we talk yeah. about him more. So yeah. So first base, we got Jose Abreu. Yeah, I, he had a good October. 
Had a good I second think, half. I think he's going to be just fine. I, I think, I mean, look at his career OPS. His career Major League Baseball OPS is 842. That's higher than Altuve's. Like, he's not... <laughs> Every, Astros fans just seem to act like he's a scrub and like that we just ah what do we do like he's a dog he just he had back issues and just he had a combination of a lot of bad things happening last year he has I a think, 963 OPS right now and on a small sample size in spring training I think he's going to be just fine I think he's obviously I don't expect him to have an 842 like I expect him to be not as good as he was at 33 but I think he's just fine. I think he probably has like a 790 OPS. He, you know, hits a tank a week, you know. That's, a, that's all I want from my my first baseman. The projections from baseball reference have it at six, 760 OPS uh, for the year, and I'll take that. I'll take that. I'm a little higher. I, I think he is like a 780, 790, but I'll take a 760. I mean, that's better than... Yeah, from going you know. from 824 in 2022 OPS to 680, obviously there's a huge dramatic fall off and we yeah, saw that yeah. with the injuries and, and and age and all that if he splits a difference at 755 760 like he just splits that difference i'm i'm the fine with floor of this team races tremendous oh yeah i'm fine with my sixth or seventh hitter in the lineup having a, a 760 ops like that's that's okay that's the one thing um that's the one thing how long is that leash like where you in the in the sense of where you have them in the order last year was a pretty long leash from from i don't mr. think from mr i don't think a spotto a spotto has that yeah, long leash I, I think that's the real question from ash's twitter and the ash's discourse wherever it is i, uh, I think how long I, is that leash i think a spotta has such a unique charm they could have that conversation and it'd be okay so that's where i'm like i think the leash would be short I think a Spotto would talk to him, and a, you know, obviously a, they have a good rapport. So I don't think it would be the end of the world. I don't think it would be some big thing like, oh, a Braves offended that he got, you know, pushed right. back. Um, but I also don't think it's going to be an issue. I, I think yeah. he probably hits sixth all season. Mm. It's probably his spot. Yeah, stay healthy throughout the season. Uh, when you're banged up, let someone know. Um, I think that was a lot of the issue last year. Uh, because we saw him at spring training. I mean, we've said it a million times on this show. He looked phenomenal. And then yeah, it was just night and day. And just So to see a healthy Abreu, he doesn't have to be the guy. Obviously, there's a ton of pressure coming into a team that just, yeah. went, just won. Last year was a lot. Eliger. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. These guys are human. Uh, the Joey Luprofito conversation um and it's kind of a juggling act for the for the bench spots and we'll dive into it that's but probably our our biggest competition yeah in, because you uh, have training you have a joey luprofito that's still in big league camp who's not on the 40 man according to your excel sheet so no, someone will have to be optioned yeah uh you have a david hensley who just was optioned down to minor league camp you have trey cabbage who got sent down you have john singleton who's there but out of options um so you have kind of a, a three horse race f- for that backup, two horse race with Singleton and, and Lupefito still at Big League Camp. Um, I, I think Lupefito starts in AAA. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets if he b- b- breaks it with Camp, but I think he starts in AAA. But I think John Singleton's leash is so short. I think they give him like two weeks, two I, or three. <sighs> I and think if he's struggling, world. but it, there, you, I, I think there's know. a world where they both coexist. They both make it. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that too because Lupefito can play outfield and first base. I just think, yeah, I mean, I, I think Lupefito is, if I had to guess, he's going to break with the team because of his versatility as a bench player. He can play, he can back up the outfield. He, he would be basically the fifth outfielder behind um, Tucker. Chaz, Myers, Rodon, and then Luperfito is that fifth guy um, that can also then come in at first, come in at second. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, well, let's let's end with let's end with the four bench spots. Um, let's let's just shift to the catching position. Um, Martin Malnado moves on to the White Sox. Uh, Yanir Diaz is the future and the present. 
I I think everyone in the I don't think I think the Houston fan base is talking about Diaz perfectly. I think the rest of the league has no idea what's no. about to hit them. I, I I literally can't wait for Twitter to melt down like, oh my god, the Astros have another guy that hits twenty five yeah. home runs. Where do they keep getting these guys? They're gonna. I guarantee you, we're it's gonna, gonna be a rude awakening for a lot of. We're people. gonna see a lot of like. His swing's so ugly. Like, how the hell did he hit that ball 111 miles an hour? He must be juicing. Like, dude, the <laughs> Astros are cheating again, dude. Yeah. Like, like what? Who's Yan Yan Yer Diaz? Who's the, <laughs> what? Like, 25 home runs. These fucking cheaters. <laughs> meanwhile, exactly he's, meanwhile, hot take. He outproduces Adley Rushman this year. Wow. I'm full of takes, dude. I'm full of. I, I'm in, I'm in not, my takes era. I'm in that, like. I'm in my hot takes, takes era. I'm era in my takes. takes era. <laughs> um, that's actually not that crazy because if you look at the like her game stats from last season, Adley had like 200 more at bats, but Yano was like right there with him per game. So, um, <clears> yeah, I mean, I think it's clearly Yiner and then Caratini. Uh, I don't even I, Caesar Salazar. I guess is our our third. Um, catcher yeah, yeah i don't think but we're that is probably a position where if we have an injury like we are gonna be immediately making a trade or something because <laughs> we don't we don't have really the depth there yeah i mean there's gonna be a lot on carantini um and I, he's handled it he's done it before we talked about him um we'll see i, I feel comfortable at that position we're already bumping up on 33 minutes which we planned for 10 yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. Uh, there, guys, there is. Uh, we still got to do the outfield. We still got to do the outfield episode after this. That's our infield depth chart preview. Who's starting preview? Um, who uh, who was nice enough to sponsor this episode? Yeah, uh, Big City Wings, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint, March Madness is here. Uh, we'll be out there with the boys. I don't know which location, but we'll be out with one of them watching the games. Uh, great wing specials, burger specials, two for Tuesdays. Two for Thursdays. Uh, Sam's incredible. If you haven't followed any of them on any socials, do that. They have, I think they have new crawfish wings. Uh, we're supposed to try those out. Uh, oh. Pump for those. Um, and then also uh, Celebrity Mint and U.S. Coins and Jewelry. Um, big things over there with the Tyson Paul fight with two of their people that they do stuff at Celebrity Mint with. So a lot of things rolling out on their socials. Be able to go follow them on their socials. Um, and the last one, Price Picks. Price Picks is back. Oh, you got a little furry friend on your on your shoulder there, Joshua. Yeah, he came to came to join. Uh, Price Picks is back. Uh, use code Apollo uh, at sign up for a one hundred percent match deposit, and uh, stick around. We'll be talking about the outfield and the four bench spots that are up for grabs as we wind down uh, our spring training content. We will not be in this insane asylum. Um, very long. Yep. Uh, we'll be at a new spot coming up. Shiny new spot. <laughs> I can't wait. Can't wait to drop that video. Uh, but thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, resubscribe, unsubscribe, and uh, see you on the next episode. Next episode Monday. Tune in. Peace. See you. Love you guys.